Now, at the best of times, even without a pandemic like COVID, <laughs> you guys will agree that startups always experience uncertainties. If you think about it, essentially, as a startup, you're betting on a certain worldview. And that's why you go to market. So, for example, say you're building a social app because you see a gap in the market that you can serve. And, you know, perhaps it takes you about a year or two years to build the app. There's an implicit as assumption that the time you spend building the app, you know, once you come out on the other end, things will still be the same. The market conditions that you saw before would be the same. But in reality, this is not guaranteed. There may be somebody else that has identified the same gap and is solving it. And they may be able to solve it even faster than you, right? So, uh, and there's also an uncertainty about, you know, how the market would respond. Perhaps it requires a change in user behavior. Are they going to respond as expected and so on? And so um, you have uh, uncertainties around, you know, com uh, the competitive landscape, uh, how competitors would respond, uncertainty around how users would respond and so on. So it's almost like the only constant is the idea. And even that, you know, is not always very constant. So th there's that. And then, you know, these are some of the normal uncertainties that we face. However, when you add the realities of the current environment, then that's another layer of complexity. Um, the disruptions caused by the pandemic, it's really changed how business is done and who we do business with. It's upended the market. And, um, you know, a, a lot of business models have had to change uh, because, you know, things that were more relevant a, a couple of years ago are not so relevant and also channels are also changing. And in terms of responding to this, there are three things that I would say. One is to be open to change. Two is to be ready to adapt. So uh, a lot of agility. And then the third would be just uh, re relentlessly customer focused. In terms of openness to change, I think this is critical. And you know, for the most part, I think we're all dancing in that change in one form or the other, because you know the crisis does not float all businesses in the same way. Businesses that are likely to thrive a lot more, and we're seeing this play out, are those that produce goods and services that are you know, perhaps a lot more essential than those that are more on the nice to have um, side of the spectrum. And so it's important to just really take a very objective and hard look at the value that we're providing and be ready to adapt. So, you know, examine our business and see, you know, what parts ser serve the current need? What really are the trends that we're seeing around user behavior? Uh, and we've seen a lot of such um, pivots. We've seen, um, you know, instead of waiting for people to come into gyms, we've, we're seeing fitness instructions going online. Uh, restaurants that are usually very much around the experience, we're seeing, um, you know, a lot more focus on food delivery. and usually that would be a small part of the value chain, a small part of the services offered, right, for a lot of restaurants because they really pride themselves around the experience. But right now, you know, in responding to the pandemic, you find that you probably need to shrink the experience part of, the, of, of, of your service and repurpose people to ensure that you have a robust and appealing uh, food delivery service that is fast that is um, you know, responsive and so on and so forth. So, you know, these kinds of thoughts, because, um, you know, it's, it's almost like, you know, as startups, the, the target is always moving, right? And to hit a moving target, hunters will tell you that you need to shoot ahead of it. And so this is something that, um, you know, we constantly uh, have to bear in mind. In the tech space, for example, as well, we do see a lot of this, the fact that um, it's important to just roll with the plan, to be adaptable, to be flexible. Um, if we look at some of the popular um, tech uh, products and businesses that we have today, many of them have gone through a lot of iteration. Android, <laughs> it's not as uh, the, the, the robustness we have around that today, it's not how it started out. We've had a number of iterations based on customer feedback and real world experiences. You know, WhatsApp, the messaging app we had today didn't start that way. It was a status app. And the response from the market was disappointing to the founders.
but they just kept observing and learning. And then, of course, also other environmental conditions changed, like Apple released uh, push notifications, which was useful for them. And it's in all of that that they were able to um, evolve it into the messaging app that we have today. And that's why with a lot of products, we have you know version 1, version 2, service, service pack 2.0, etc. I think it's really key to just make sure that um, some feedback mechanism is built into the product and the process as part of our go-to-market strategy so that we can continue to iterate. And then the final bit around that is just you know, being relentlessly customer focused. Uh, if we look at a lot of the companies that are successful, particularly in tech, and on relenting and almost obsessive focus on the end user is top of mind. At Google, for example, one of our internal philosophies is focus on the user and all else will follow. Because really, that's where it, start, it starts from. We're not writing code for the sake of it, but to actually meet a need to solve a problem. And that is what is sustainable.